How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you are watching Nature Now. So this video here is about what I find to be the most beautiful insect in all of Pennsylvania. It is the dogbane leaf beetle, known as Chrysochus auratus, and that means covered in gold, golden one. Made of gold. <laughs> it means made of gold, but I think it should actually be called Chrysochus multichroma because this insect is many colors. It's the rainbow of beetles. It's metallic red, metallic green, and metallic blue, and is truly a living work of art. Have a look. These beetles are actually pretty common in the northeastern United States and probably other parts of the eastern U.S. and even southeastern Canada. And you'll generally find them in meadows and fields and next to forests and stuff where you'll find transitional areas with lots of dogbane plants and sometimes milkweed too. It's hot out and I am covered in sweat. It's a Lyme disease thing. But anyways, you may notice that these beetles really don't care what sees them. They'll blunder right out into the open and they'll even take a nap on a leaf in broad daylight. It doesn't matter if a bird, another insect, or even a mammal sees them, they don't care. And there's a reason for that. They are brightly colored. And in nature, that generally means one of a few things. Either they are venomous, or they taste really bad, or, in this case, they are poisonous. So much so, in fact, that if some creatures were to eat enough of them, they will die. These beetles will feed on dogbane plants and sometimes milkweeds. Those plants are filled with highly poisonous compounds known as cardinalides. These compounds are toxic to a variety of animals, including humans. Cardinalides are also known as cardiac glycosides, and these compounds can sometimes have serious lethal effects on the heart of some creatures that ingest them. Dogbane beetles do not succumb to the effects of these glycosides because they actually store them in special glands in the body. In fact, if threatened by a predator, they can excrete them to defend themselves. And like I said, those brightly colored bodies are a great indicator to other wildlife, you don't want to eat me. If a bird or something comes along and bites down on it, it'll excrete those toxins through joints in its legs or even its largely developed thorax. If the animal was to actually bite down and consume it, it's probably going to get really sick and risk heart failure. Like milkweed, dogbane has actually found another way to defend itself, and that's through a very sticky sap known as latex. That latex, of course, is toxic, but it's very sticky like a glue. When insects come into this plant and start gnawing on it, it'll gum up their mouth parts and make it so that they can't chew or take any more bites out of the plant. Dogbane beetles, of course, found a way around this also. They'll find the parts of the leaf, usually the tips, where there aren't many veins, and they'll take little bites, avoiding the veins. And when enough sap comes out and starts getting in the way of their mouth, they actually back up along the leaf, wiping their mouth on it so that that latex comes off and sticks to the leaf rather than their face. Quick tip, any plant with the word bane in it generally means it's toxic or poisonous. Think about henbane, probably not good for hens. You've got dogbane, which is particularly bad for dogs, but all animals in general, even wolfsbane, which is really good if you're trying to combat a werewolf. Just a quick side note, back to the video. Dogbane leaf beetles will actually use visual, chemical, and olfactory cues when they're colonizing the small areas in the meadows. Those are the areas that have the dogbane growing, of course. When it comes to mating, dogbane leaf beetles use cuticular hydrocarbon signals, known as CHCs, to serve as sex pheromones. Of course, these CHCs are both species-specific and sex-specific, and it makes it a lot easier when they're finding mates. Now get ready for this. They will actually mate once every day. I guess they have all the fun. The males usually tend to be the ones that go around selecting mates. In fact, it's kind of interesting how that works. Pretty much just walks up to the female and makes his move. How you doing? Tell you what, me and you. And then the female's kind of like, 
Okay. The dogbane leaves would have these little brown patches and globs on them, and those are the beetle's eggs. It doesn't take too long for them to hatch, and of course, then they spend a long time in their larval form, which is kind of like a whitish grub with a yellowish brown head that of course feeds on dogbane. Once these beetles reach adulthood, their lifespan is generally six to eight weeks, which isn't very long, but it's not bad for an insect. Like most arthropods, they do spend a considerable amount of time self-grooming and keeping off debris and fungal spores and things like that. Again, these beetles are beautiful. They have this blue-green chrysomelids on their bodies, and the elytra are this wonderful coppery sheen. And if you look at them at the right light, they're either blue, red, or green, and sometimes this bronzy color, and it's just awesome. You should see them in flight. When the sun catches them, it just looks amazing. Appreciating these beetles closely not only reveals their beauty on the elytra, thorax, and head, but it's also on their undersides too. Their brilliant metallic green underbellies and legs are magnificent to look at. Even their mandibles are a little bit interesting. Their right one is longer than the left one, and when closed, there's actually a groove on the left one so that the right one can fit nicely in place. I might be backwards on that, but I think I've got it right. So I'm sure you guys probably agree with me that these are some of the most beautiful insects in our country. The dogbane leaf beetles are just, as I said, a marvelous work of art. If you have a chance to hit a meadow on a nice sunny afternoon in say June or early July, try looking for the dogbane plants and you don't have to look far. The sun will just glimmer off the backs of these insects and catch your eye. Take a closer look and I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So, thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I am Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.